Welcome to the Pirate Game Assignment video. And in this video, we're going to talk about some ideas and some concepts on how you can go ahead solving this assignment. To get started, we're first going to show you what the end product looks like. So I have it currently running in my simulator here. And we see that there's three view containers, character stats, actions, and story. Our character stats is going to describe or show visually what the current stats of our character are. So we're going to have to create a character object later on to represent or model this information. We're also going to have an action section that's going to have a button that's going to allow me to do something. So here if I press on this button, we see that it's updated my weapon. And we also see that my damage has changed as a result of picking up this sword. So taking an item, or in this case a weapon, has an effect both on our current item as well as our current damage and we need to update this visually when we take our sword. We also have a story section and this will be static uh, for each tile but each time we navigate to a new tile or a new uh, area on our coordinate system and we'll take a look at what our coordinate system is in just a minute we'll be able to display different information on our story but this will not be interactive the way the take story take the sword button is. We also need a reset game button so that we're going to be able to, I can go ahead and press reset button, reset game, and we now have fists back as our weapon and our damage is 10. So we can also navigate to different tiles using the north and east buttons. We don't have a west or a south button because we're currently on 0, 0 in our coordinate system. So the only places where we can go with legal moves are to the north and to the east. So let's go north. And we see now that we now have a south option that's appeared, and we can go back to our original tile here. But by going north, we see that we now get new information that displays our action as well as our story. And I can take some armor, and this will update my armor stat as well as my health stat. I can navigate east, and I can take a different weapon. And we're able to navigate through our store here. So in this story example, We've been ordered, or we've been captured by pirates in order to walk the plank. So I'm not going to show any fear, and oh, but it looks like I lost a little bit of damage here. So I can go east, we can continue to go east, and finally we'll have a boss here, and we can fight our pirate boss, and we see that my health is currently dropping, and at some point, ah, I died. I lost the game because I wasn't able to kill the pirate before he killed me. So we this is an UI alert view and we saw this in our prep videos. Uh, but if we press OK we'll be able to go back to our app and we can press reset game and go back to the beginning. So this is kind of the what how your application should work as well as the functionality that I've at least built into my application. Feel free to add additional uh, functionality to your game. We also, I wanted to show you the storyboard here. So quickly, we have a view, and another view, and a third UI view. And these are currently sitting on top of our view object. We also notice that we have an image view at the top. And order matters. So if I drag my image view to the bottom here, we see that my image view is now on top of everything. But we want our image view to be able to be our background so we can set photos to be our background. And that's how we had this nice look on our simulator here. So we're going to make sure our image view is at the top. And we're going to be able to add views on top of it. And what these will be as containers because we're actually able to add labels. And we notice that the labels are indented here or that they're inside of this container right now. They're, we say they're subviews of this view, which is our yellow container. And then we say our view is a subview of our main view, which is what we put everything on top of. So there's certainly um, a new concept of subviews here, but you should be able to do everything graphically and you should be able to confirm in your scene that uh, items are being added properly. We'll be talking about uh, subviews in next week's material. Also, we notice that I have a bunch of different buttons here at the bottom here. And I've hooked these all up to my header file properly, so we're going to make sure we have actions. But I've also been able to update these buttons by hiding them, and I was able to change the text of my action button dynamically. So we're going to want to create both outlets and actions for our buttons, so we can create both. 
So how have we been able to navigate to different tiles? Well, we're going to be using a coordinate system inside of this application. And we currently started on 0, 0. And when we went east, we went to 1, 0. And we will have uh, a system of 4 by 3. Our width is 4 and our height is 3. And this is our coordinate system or our tile system where we're able to navigate and keep track of where we are inside of our application. We're going to use a tile model class and your tile header file to start with should look something like this. And what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to package all the information to update our views dynamically in a single object. So our story, our background image, and our action button name will store in one object. And when we go to a new uh, coordinate on our coordinate system, we'll find the tile for that coordinate and we'll update our view dynamically. We're also going to be using a factory design pattern where our model class, which is our tile right now, will be separate from our view controller. We'll have a factory that sits in between it. And when the factory's job is to create instances of our tile, so because our, we're going to be using a 4 by 3 coordinate system, at least in the tutorials together, it's recommended that you use a factory so that you can create all of your tile objects inside of the factory and all your view controller has to do is to ask your factory to hand it back an array of tiles. So what is that going to look like? Well, again, we recommend creating an embedded array for your tile objects. There are more than one way to solve this issue. And certainly if you come up with a different solution, that's perfectly okay and even encouraged. But the way we've solved this is we've created four arrays and we say that each array is a column in our coordinate system. And each array holds three tiles. And using the embedded arrays uh, ability, we're able to package all these arrays inside of a single array. And we can call that array tiles. So how does this stack up in our coordinate system? Well, here we see that we have our four arrays lined out. And that each array has three tiles. So we were able to start on tile one when we started at coordinate zero, zero. And when we navigated to the east, we went to tile four. But what we were really doing was accessing our tiles array and accessing the second element in our tiles array, which is array two. And then once we were able to access array two, we were able to access the third element in array two, which is index two. We were also able to change our buttons dynamically inside of this application. So what we just saw earlier was we were able to change the title of our button. Now, unlike a label where we have a text property, buttons have something called control state. So we'll get more into control state in a next video series. But for now, we're going to use UI control state normal uh, because this will just allow us to update our titles dynamically. So instead of press me, we can put any sort of set of characters we'd like inside of the quotes and have that display as our button's title. We also have a new property that we'll be using, which is the hidden property of on buttons. So if we say button.hidden is equal to yes, it will hide our button. If we say button.hidden equals no, it will unhide our button if it's currently hidden. And if it's currently just on the screen, it'll do nothing. So currently, our point has an x and a y coordinate. And this is two different numbers that need to be packaged together into a single variable. Well, we can use something called a CG point, which is known as a struct. And we'll cover structs in great depth in a future video, but we can at least start using a struct. And CG points are actually fairly simple to create. We just write CG point, which is our type, and give it a variable name point. And we can use the function name CG point make and give it two numbers. Now, CG point makes technically take floats, but since our coordinate system is only using whole numbers, you can also use integers inside of our CG point make function. Notice that we don't have a care star since this is a primitive uh, instead of an object which requires care stars. Even though we're able to package information together, which is very object-like, we're only able to package primitive data together. So this is a way we can package primitives. So we say that CG point is a primitive. So when we want to access our data, so let's say we want to access the first point in our CG point 
that we just created, we would write point dot x and this would give us the first value, whereas point dot y would give us our second value. So we're going to use CG points to keep track of our current location. And I recommend that you create a property that's of CG point. So remember, don't declare it as strong, only declare it as non-atomic, so that you're going to be able to track where your user currently is inside of your application. And if, for example, your user press the East button, you should update your X point to be 1, 0 if we started at 0, 0. Right? So we could do CG point make. 1 comma 0 and set that equal to our new properties point. We're also going to be creating a character, weapon, and armor class to model information inside of our application. So our character is going to have a current damage, health, weapon, and armor, and we'll use this information to update our character section on our storyboard. We'll also be able to create a weapon object and an armor object and both our weapon and our armor will have a name so that we'll be able to update that information as well. Notice that in my character.h class, I have to import the weapon.h and the armor.h files because I'm creating properties of those classes. So instead of importing in the implementation file like we've done in the past, we need to import in the header file so we can create a property of those classes. So after the, we're done doing all of these updates, we're going to update our tile model so that our story can dynamically add a weapon, armor, or some sort of health effect. So in our simulator before, we saw that when we walked the plank, we lost some health. Well, what I did is for my tile model, I added a health effect property, and I set that uh, property value to negative some value. Then when I pressed the action button, I looked at the current tile model and was able to see that there was a health effect. And as a result, I removed some health from my character. So in closing, I hope that this video has helped you visually understand the requirements in our assignment. And let me just remind you that as you tackle this assignment, this is by far the most comprehensive bit of code we've looked at so far. We can even see over here in the folder navigator that we're using many different classes and we're using a factory object which is also new. So we have to learn a new design pattern. And as we go through, you're definitely going to run into issues and bugs. So please feel free to update the discussion forum with questions and we'll certainly be active on there as well. Due to the length of this assignment, we'll be releasing the solution videos in two parts, half this week and half next week. I hope you have a really fun time building out your game, and I'm confident that with successful completion of this assignment, you'll have a greater understanding of object-oriented programming, which is arguably one of the most important foundational concepts to understand as you're learning how to code.